Hello viewers, this is Sushil Chalot, your host, and I welcome you to my YouTube channel. And this YouTube channel, you have been seeing a lot of worthy, useful, informative, and innovative videos all this time over Excel and some other subjects. Well, I am back with my new video here, and in this video, I am going to choose a topic which is of great interest for all of us in our personal as well as professional life. Well, what is that? It is something to do with finance and financial requirements or commands or the functions those we handle in Excel and here it is that is NPV that is net present value. And the next one in this video is IRR that is internal rate of return. We shall be learning these two functions in Excel and before spending much time on to this slide, let's get on to our workbook in Excel. Well. In this Excel workbook, we see certain things like I'll explain you the investment what a person or a firm likes to do is C0, then the return in the first year is C1, second year is C2, and third year is C3, so on and so forth. Up to the teeth year, the investments can be or the returns can be mentioned as CT. Well, friends, the money has got certain value and its value depreciates every year on year and that is because of various reasons like inflation or the purchasing power of the money goes on reducing year on year for an example let me take you through the inflation rates those were applicable in year 2019-20 in india every country has got its inflation rate defined based on the money earned the expenditures and the loans or the burdens that the country has to carry on for its citizen in the global market. Well, in 2019, the inflation rate in India was 4.76%. In 2020, it was 6.20% because of probably the pandemic. The forecasted inflation rate for 2021 is 407 and for 22 and 23 are those values which you are seeing on your screen. So friends, no country in this world has been saved off from the inflation and every person and every firm therefore is very much interested in knowing the present value of the money as well as the net present value of the money so friends let me explain you a few more words or titles here that is inflation or discount rate that is represented by d here it is represented in percentage as per the inflation or the interest rate which the person has to pay on the investment that he does or the firm does or in other words whatever that value purchasing value or the depreciation value of that money is represented in percentage here so cash flow as you see on your screen the first year of the cash flow that is the investment is mentioned here as negative Suppose a firm wants to invest rupees 25,000. I have considered Indian rupees as the currency. This currency can be any time currency worldwide. So it can be a pound, pound sterling, it can be Canadian dollar, or it can be a US dollar, or it can be baht, or it can be wong, or any other currency. So, well, let's get on to this currency as Indian rupees here in the discussion or the demonstration here. The first year of return that is the benefit or the profit made through this project or the investor is 8000 rupees, second year is 10,000 and third year it's 11,000. Now the investor, investor is very much interested in knowing if at all he or she or the firm invests rupees 25,000 and these are the returns that they are going to earn year on year. Is it beneficial? Is it advisable? Is it sensible? Is it business oriented to invest in this project? Well. Let us calculate the present values of every year. So present year, that is the present current value, it will be same as it is as there is no depreciation at the beginning. But well, for the sake of understanding the formula for the present value, let's get on to this. So present value is defined as the value here into 1 by the discount rate raised to raised to the number of year that is the year eightieth year of the investment so it will be the value here divided by one plus the interest rate so interest rate i am going to click here the sale e3 either you can write e3 or you can write six percent both are equivalent so this one 
raised to raised to this is the zeroth year so the value here will be raised to zero and there it is you get the value as 25,000 as it is for the present value of this year now what I'm going to do here is this interest rate or the inflation rate or the discount rate is constant so I'm going to lock it with function f4 and there it is it's locked so now with this locking I can copy this formula downwards so instead of writing 0 what I'm going to do here is I'm going to choose the cell which represents 0 here there it is the cell b3 and it is equivalent to what I had done earlier but I did it so so that I can copy the formula in the lower cells here and once done there it is now you see for the end of the first year the value of the return that is rupees 8000 will actually be equivalent to 7547.17 rupees and so on and so forth up to the tieth year so every year if i consider so in the third year with the depreciation rate or the inflation or the discount rate at 6% the value of 11000 rupees shall be 9235.81 rupees and so friends as i already told you the value of the money goes on reducing value of the money is nothing as but the purchasing power of the amount of money that is considered so in the first year if at all someone or the firm gets a return of rupees 8000 the actual equivalent value present value at the first year end shall be 7547 this is what it means so these are the present values of every year from c1 c2 c3 and so forth and so forth so if we consider the formula for the net present value there it is on the screen so it is NPV is equal to C0 plus C0 upon 1 plus D plus C1 upon 1 plus D raised to 2 so on and so forth up to the tieth year in the tieth year the present value of that amount of that money shall be CT divided by 1 plus D raised to T in this way one can find out the present value or the net asset or the net present value is equal to sum of all these and if I say auto sum there it is the auto sum will be 682.95 rupees so this shall be the npv or the net present value of the money so well now let us go on to excel and there is a formula for finding out this if i type here npv then the first thing what it asks is the rate i will go and click i'm going to click here e3 cell wherein the rate has been put in give comma and then the value now take into consideration that excel does not consider the investment as the value one but it considers the c1 as the value one and so here i'm going to consider this as the values of consideration i'm going to close the parenthesis and finally i'm going to say plus the investment value so i beg your pardon i shouldn't have been clicking d3 d4 to d6 it should be actually c4 to c6 those are the returns and then finally after i have done with this the investment value is what has to be added to this now friends as you see the investment value in the cell c3 has been quoted as negative because this is the value that the firm or the individual is going to invest and with this formula the investment plus the summation of the present values of all the years will return me the npv so as you see the first method was individual way of finding out the present value of every year and then doing the summation the second way i showed you by using the formula npv in the excel and both yield the same answers so one can use the formula npv and find out the net present value now friends with all this description and how demonstration of how the npv is calculated let me explain you the significance of npv so npv returns the net present value of the money and how does it impact is let me tell you it impacts the way like it impacts the way like if at all this value happens to be if at all this value happens to be positive then the investment is worth doing else it is not so friends if at all this value of inflation goes on increasing say for example if i make it double say 12 percent and say enter the NP value becomes negative and when it's negative value it means the business is going to be not worth doing it will be a business of loss so there it is if i change this value to 10 percent well the NP value still remains negative if i go to 7 percent it turns out to be positive 
so that till that time or the till the time this value is positive certainly it is worthy doing the investment and running the business or the project well friends if at all i go over here and find out the principal interest or the amount that one can earn through a principal interest that is nothing else but amount is equal to principal into 1 plus rate of interest raised to number of years so this is a very simple formula let me apply it here and find out what will the component interest if this person invests 25000 so if i say 25000 multiplied by 1 plus r that is 1 plus r is the rate of interest that is 7% so i'm going to click here and raise to n that is number of years that is three number of years here so if i put in like this here i am calculating the amount that shall be yielded at the end of the third year at the interest rate of 7% and the value of the earnings shall be 30626.08 rupees well if i check onto this and do the summation of all this so if i go here and consider the value of this this will be nothing else but 25000 plus 8000 plus 11000 plus 10000 that will be nothing else but the asset value at the end of third year shall be 25000 plus this that is the present values of the every year and when i do the summation this shall be the output so friends this is how one can find out if at all the project is worthy or it is worthy just to invest that amount into a bank interest of compounded over year on and there will be the value which shall be needed so if at all this interest rate goes to 8% there it is now the value has become minus 287.05 that means the project is not worth doing rather it will be beneficial to put in the money over here and see the yield growing year on year so this is how one can choose what is the importance of the inflation rate so if at all the interest rate is higher than the inflation rate certainly it is beneficial to invest in the interest values if at all the returns are much higher than the inflation rates then certainly it is better to put into the business prospects so now what is the threshold wherein this value of the npv becomes zero and from positive to negative it shifts over that is the value of interest and of demand or the requirement of big organizations or the financial gurus who will find out what shall be the value at which the business shall convert into profit to loss or a business of prospect to a business of a failure so well that shall be the value when it becomes zero so i need to find out value wherein it becomes zero and what shall be that value of npv where the interest rate and the returns shall yield me zero npv to find out that value npv we have the command of irr as i already showed the internal rate of return so how do we find the internal rate of return let me go over here and demonstrate to you when i say i n r or irr there it is the function it returns the internal rate of return for series of cash flows so series of cash flows is nothing else but the values of the c so there it is i have put in here now it asks for the values now friends let me tell you irr considers the value c0 also as a part of its values and so i am going to consider value from c0 to c3 that is cell c3 to c6 the next thing what it requires that is in bracket uh, pra square parenthesis square parenthesis means optional so one can give this guess value or one can opt not to give it this guess value can be any value of the interest or the inflation rate or the discount rate and it should be a logical value it cannot be something absurd so if at all i want to put here say value 9 i'll guess 9 and put the value there i'm closing the parenthesis and when i put in enter i get the value of 0 0.07 well the value here should be percentage and there it is so value here becomes seven percent we have already put in seven percent but that time the npu not was not zero why was this let me explain you before that let me change this value up to five decimal places so 7.39490 percent is the value where the npv should become zero 
Well, rather than keeping on guessing, let us go over and put this value 7.39490. And when I say enter, there it is, the value of NPV becomes zero. So friends, when the NPV value becomes zero, that means it is a neutral business, neither profit nor loss. So it's better not to do a business at zero NPV. Always look out for NPV value positive and the rate or inflation rate or the discount rate at which it should be done is here on your screen. So big industries or financial gurus always look out for the NPV values before they put in their investments in any kind of project. Friends, I have explained you how to use the NPV function, how to use the IRR function and how to derive the profitable business aspects or the ratios. Well, this was the NPV formula, theoretical ones. So it said that C0 plus C0 upon 1 plus D plus C1 upon 1 plus D raised to 2 plus C2 upon 1 plus D raised to 3 and so on and so forth up to CT upon 1 plus D raised to T, where T is the nth value or the tth value of the year. Suppose a business is to be run for 25 years, then the T value shall be 25 and subsequently the NP value can be calculated. So this is how we have found out the NP value. Subsequently, we found out for the discount rate of 7.3949, the NPV or the present value, net present value became zero. So when the net present value becomes zero, that means the business is in neutral. There is neither a gain nor loss, which is not the aspect of doing a business or intent of doing a business. Well, IRR, IRR that is internal rate of return is what the value of the discount rate or the inflation at which the NPV becomes zero. With all this summary, all this explanation, I hope you have understood how to find out a profitable business or if at all you, doing, you are doing some investment somewhere, certainly you should think of what are the returns and are the returns worth doing. Friends, with this description of NPV function and IRR function, I'm coming to the closure of this video. I hope this has been an informative video for you. You have learned something that is useful for you to use in your personal as well as professional life. If you like this video, certainly I request you to put your thumbs up at the YouTube channel. Share this video with your friends and colleagues or even your business partners. Why not? Or if you are a professional in finance, do share these videos with your clients so that they will understand where they should invest and where they should not. Well, if you are new to my channel and not subscribed to the channel till now, I will request you and recommend that you subscribe to this channel because this channel has got lot of videos which are of worth seeing and worth using. Friends, I will be soon back with my new video. If at all you have any subjects of your likings and your requirements, do make mention at the YouTube channel and I'll try to meet your requirements. I'll be back soon. Till then, take care. Goodbye.